I've just spent the last few days testing out ChatGPT as a content creation tool and my mind is blown. I've already been able to use it to write blog posts, Instagram posts, Instagram prompts, website SEO descriptions and much more all automatically. In this video I'm going to show you how to do this as well and how this is potentially going to change content creation forever. But I also wanted to share with you some of its limitations and things to consider if you are going to use it in your marketing as well. So if you haven't heard of it already, ChatGPT is an AI chatbot that you can basically ask any question to or have conversations with and it will generate human-like answers pretty much instantly using data from all across the internet and training as well. It's currently free to use up to a certain point and it feels like everyone on the internet is talking about it right now. So I actually hadn't been able to access it for a good few days because their servers were overloaded. But I've been able to use it over the last couple of days. I hope it doesn't do the same thing to you, but just something to bear in mind. In terms of what it can do, it's basically like having a virtual assistant. So you can ask it questions, you can get it to do research for you, you can get it to write content for you, and you can even use it to generate code or images as well, all based off a prompt or a question that you ask it. So once you start using it, you'll realize how insane this actually is. Um, but you might have to sign up for a free account on OpenAI, and then you basically just can type in to this little box down here what you want it to generate for you or a question. So I'm just going to type in a quick prompt in here to show you and so that you can see how basically instantly it manages to generate a piece of content. Okay, so as you can see, I just typed in that short prompt. You can actually make it as detailed as you like. And it has generated this 500 word blog post for me within less than a minute. And the crazy thing about this is that it is AI. It's artificial intelligence. So it's not just copying and pasting this from Wikipedia. It's using data from all across the web to write something in a human-like voice and language because it's actually a language processing tool. So it's constantly learning and phrasing things in its own way. So this is more of just kind of like a long paragraph style blog post. But in another example, I asked it to write an 800 word blog post about the best email marketing tips for creative business owners in 2023. And it wrote this out with more of like a listicle style blog post. So it does create kind of different formats as well of content. And if you actually sit down and read what it comes up with, it is mind blowing how accurate and good it is at the English language and grammar and everything like that. I'm going to talk about some nuances and limitations in a minute but just as a first reaction it is crazy and I've tested this with loads of different topics different types of content there's so much you can do with it so yeah the first reaction when you use this tool is basically like wow this is incredible this is so cool but then it starts to sink in and your next reaction is probably something along the lines of wow this could really mess stuff up in the world of content creation and for SEO won't it put people out of jobs what's the point of being a content creator anymore how's this going to work with Google ranking things if everyone's just going to pump out blog posts using this tool so I have some thoughts and some things that I've noticed after using it over the last couple of days so with regards to SEO it's really important to remember that Google is a massive company with very sophisticated sophisticated algorithms and whilst it might be freaking out right now and might not have caught up with the technology just yet I imagine that at Google right now they are working on a way for that algorithm to be able to tell what has been created by AI they've probably already figured this out but just need to make it a bit more sophisticated even before this whole thing came out it's very common for people to create websites that are just full of content that's been written up very quickly and is purely focused on SEO and Google notices that it knows when people are trying to cheat the system and it's only going to get more sophisticated. The second thing that comes to mind is, is there going to be issues with plagiarism with this chatbot and the content that it's producing? And obviously it's AI, so technically the content that it's creating, it's not just copy and pasted from anywhere, it has actually been generated as new content and apparently people have been testing it and it does tend to rank quite low on the plagiarism scale but it's not perfect and there is still a risk there that some parts of the text that is being generated could be plagiarized from various sources from around the web. There's also technology being created right now that is going to potentially be able to put what's called a cryptographic watermark on the content that is created by AI so that 
things like the Google algorithm and um, plagiarism tools for exams and research and things like that might be able to pick up on. And things like copyright laws will eventually catch up. Right now, the technology is moving too fast for the laws to keep up. So who knows what that is going to look like eventually. But I would certainly avoid just copying and pasting any of the content that this thing creates and calling it your own work without customizing it or editing it. The other thing to note is that it is not perfect. It's pretty close, but it's not 100% perfect. If you're asking it to create content about very broad topics that everyone kind of knows about, it's gonna probably do quite well. But there's no real point in creating that kind of content because it's probably already been done a million times and now people are able to use this tool. So if you want to use it to create content about very specific niches, for example, writing a blog post about the town of Falmouth, which is a very small town, it's a very specific niche to be writing about, it's going to create a really great piece of content for you, but you are still going to want to fact check it. I've been testing it out with various different topics and some of it did come back with things that were incorrect or just weren't quite right. So some intimate knowledge is still required if you're going to be creating content around specific niches. For example, yesterday I asked it to write me a blog post about the best paddle boarding spots in Cornwall. Now most of the suggestions that it generated were fine and definitely something that I would recommend as well as someone who lives in Cornwall and has that knowledge. But one of the suggestions it gave me definitely would not be a spot that I would recommend because it would actually be too wavy for you to go paddle boarding on. And that kind of very specific local knowledge is something that I have, but I wouldn't necessarily expect anyone from a different location to know that. And I wouldn't expect an AI robot to know that either. So definitely very location specific stuff or things that are slightly subjective or opinion based. The content is not going to be perfect for this. But also I asked it to write a blog post about email marketing using a tool called Flowdesk. And this is a topic that I specialize in in terms of knowledge. I have a whole course about how to use Flowdesk, but it's a very niche tool and it's actually quite recent in terms of how long it's been around for. And one of the tips or facts that the chat GPT generated for this was actually wrong. It said that in Flowdesk you can use an A B testing feature, which Flowdesk doesn't have yet. But if you were a human wanting to write a good SEO post about Flowdesk, having never used it, but trying to use your own research, you would probably make that same mistake too. And this is where it's important for you to make sure you're inputting your own specific niche knowledge into these pieces of content as well. So overall, I would say do not just copy and paste this and use it on your blog and your website without customizing or editing. How I would suggest to use it would be to use it for creating prompts. It's great if you don't have any idea about what kinds of content to post or you need some idea for like the subheadings to include within your blog posts. You can definitely use the content that it produces as a foundation and a starting point. But then what you're going to want to do is go in and edit it, tailor it, use your own brand tone of voice with it and add in a bit more personality. So overall, what do I think this means for the future of content creation? This is a fairly new tool, so it's really hard to know. It's hard to know how Google is going to respond. It's hard to know how copyright laws are going to respond. But for now, it does look like it's going to mean that everyone and anyone is going to be able to pump out well-researched pieces of content for all sorts of different platforms. And that is both a massive pro if you are someone who needs help with your content creation process but it can be scary if that is part of your livelihood. However, if you make sure that you are actually editing it and just using it as a jumping off point and adding in the nuances of the topics that you know about, then that's going to be really key. Another thing that I think it's going to mean is that personality is going to be more important than ever in the way that you write content, in your brand messaging, in the way that you show up online as a business owner. Using personal stories, anecdotes, insights is going to make your content stand out the most. So it's going to be really important to develop your own brand tone of voice and really work on being a personal storyteller and injecting some of yourself into each piece of content that you create. You obviously want to be unique and have people want to read your content specifically rather than just any content that any old AI robot has created. After using it a few times myself, it definitely gave me trust issues as I was browsing the web, looking at other articles and thinking, was this actually written by a human or was it written by AI? And if it's written by AI, do I actually trust that it's accurate now knowing what I know? And I have always wondered this about some sites that just pump out SEO focused content where they have researchers who 
possibly don't actually have the knowledge themselves and so miss out the nuances of certain topics. So I think what it's also going to mean is that trust is really important and developing a community of people who trust you and what you have to say about certain topics and your own unique perspectives. Also, of course, this is all kind of about written content. Technically, AI can also create images as well. So if you're really going to extrapolate that, it does mean that, of course, video content is here to stay. It's the best way to get across your brand and your personality because currently it can't be faked by AI. So I hope you found this video interesting. Definitely let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on ChatGPT and what you've used it for so far. Thanks so much for watching and I'll be back again soon with another video.